The Super Bowl has concluded. Your Kansas City Chiefs are Super Bowl champions of the world. My money was on the Niners and uh, yeah, that money's gone. Usher's halftime show exceeded all of my expectations. Pretty sure I'm ranking that number one of all of my Super Bowl halftime experiences. Absolutely entertaining and extremely nostalgic. But then there's the matter of this Super Bowl commercials. 30 seconds, $7 million. Some of the commercials entertaining, some ridiculous, but you know, however you wanna spend your money is up to you. My big question was, would any of the auto manufacturers decide to spend that money on advertising for their battery electric vehicles or put it to better use, like building the best electric vehicle that they could? No EV commercials from Ford or GM who are known for their advertised spending, and honestly, that's probably for the best. But it would appear BMW, Volkswagen, and Kia probably didn't get the message. Christopher Walken and Usher attempt to give BMW a little bit of a boost. Volkswagen leans into their tradition, their history of the bug here in the United States. And Kia's commercial is about ice skating? I don't know, maybe it was a conscious decision to surround their electric vehicle around cold weather elements. The freeze in Chicago did paint Tesla in a bad light, despite Tesla being the best cold weather EV on the planet. These legacy auto manufacturers obviously didn't get the memo that any advertising that they conduct in the Super Bowl would just make consumers wonder, hmm, I wonder why Tesla isn't advertising. I'm seeing those things around a whole lot more. Let me go check the website. Learned consumers will do a cost comparison analysis. What do I get for this amount of money? And when you're shelling out tens of thousands of dollars, you're simply just gonna want the best bang for your buck. Speaking of which, Tesla's up in the pre-market a little over half a percent, sitting at 194.78. It would appear that TSLA is trying to claw itself back into $200 per share. Of course, year to date, Tesla has been struggling, down over 20% for the year. If we go back an entire 52 weeks, Tesla is still down over 3.5%. I definitely need Tesla to correct itself before the middle of July, but until I see the stock soar back over 205, I'm still going to be placing protective puts. Tesla layoff rumors, Rivian drops entry-level pricing, Lucid's unusual partnership, and more. Biggest EV stories of the week. <laughs> Electric vehicle stocks ended the week on a mixed note, with high profile stocks rising along with the broader market, while most struggling startups posted weekly declines. Shares of market leader Tesla made a comeback after pulling back to their lowest level in about nine months. Here are the key events that happened in the EV space during the week. Tesla sold 71,447 made in China EVs in January, marking a 24% month over month drop, but an 8% year over year increase. Of the total, the company sold 39,881 cars domestically, while the remaining 31,566 units were exported. Domestic sales were up about 48.5% year over year, but declined over 47% from December. Giga Shanghai is Tesla's main export hub. Depending on what Tesla prioritizes at the time that quarter, you'll see more domestic, you may see more exports, but I trust that Tesla has their finger on the pulse. Separately, a report said Tesla upgraded its hardware of its Model Y EVs in China to Hardware 4. This may not be such a big deal over there in the Pacific region considering North America is the focus for full self-driving. But if you have a Hardware 3 vehicle and you want to upgrade to the Hardware 4 version, you may see a certain segment of the population upgrade to these newer models. I know Hardware 4 was a key factor in my decision to upgrade. Tesla stirred concerns among its workforce this week as it asked its managers in the U.S. to categorize the roles of their team members as either critical or non-critical. Shocker, but I suppose this is news. Tesla's India plans also continue to be in limbo. Tesla has been clamoring for reduced import duties for its cars even as the Indian authorities are firm on having company localized manufacturing. Rivian announces new battery pack options. Amid the slowing global EV adoption, Rivian deemed fit to lower its prices. Instead of announcing outright price cuts, the company announced two new battery packs, namely the Standard and Standard Plus. The company also said customers may qualify for a federal tax credit of $3,750 
on the purchase of vehicles with the newly introduced battery options. Ford wants to go low end with EVs, don't they all? Legacy automaker Ford, which has been struggling with its EV transition, is set to tap the low end of the market. On an earnings call with analysts, Jim Farley said, we made a bet in silence two years ago. We developed a super talented Skunkworks team to create a low cost EV platform. We are working really hard to be on the low end of that range because we think it's appropriate to run the business. He also said that the Gen 2 platform products will be profitable after the first year of their launch. Promises, promises. I hope they are successful. Lucid strikes packed with sacks? This week, luxury department store chain Saks announced a partnership with Lucid, under which the former will offer exclusive demo drive experiences of the Lucid Air at select Saks Fifth Avenue store locations. In conclusion, congratulations to Chiefs Nation. Super Bowl champs back-to-back -back is no easy feat. Can the team three-peat? Quite the dearth of EV commercials this Super Bowl. Not really sure if Tesla's gonna see that Super Bowl bump going toward their website traffic this year. But hey, something's better than nothing. Thanks BMW, thank you Volkswagen, and thank you Kia. The added website traffic was much appreciated. We got a little bit of Tesla China sales, some India rumors, Tesla scaring their employees, whether or not they're critical or not. Rivian introduced some lower price models despite Ford's claims of pulling back on their EV production. They still have hope for their next-gen vehicles. Profitable after one year of production? Color me skeptical. And Lucid dives headfirst into their luxury persona, partnering with Saks. Not sure how a department store chain is going to improve the margins on these vehicles, but hey, stranger things have happened. That's all I got for you today. Be easy. Purr.